Okay, so um, so there are still people outside, but uh, uh, we'll we'll start anyway, right? So um, uh, we'll make two uh, lectures. So one will be uh, fully covered by me, right? Uh, the second half um, uh, or the second part uh, will be on chatbots, since we just had. Uh, a discussion on uh, chatbots, right? So it might be kind of relevant uh, uh, to show uh, this uh, other thing as well. And uh, Luca Bradesco will uh, uh, talk on that uh, that part, or I will start, right? And then he will continue. Um, anyway, the first part is on global media monitoring, right? So what you see here on the picture, right, um, is um, uh, let me just uh, restart uh, thing. So this is a live picture of what's happening right now in the world, right? So you see on the right side, uh, information is coming in, uh, article by article, right? And these articles are, well, about uh, global events, right? So what you see here on the left, you see uh, big circles, and uh, bigger the circle, more important event it is, or more published event it is, right? And uh, <coughs> uh, so at the moment the day is like in uh, US, right? Uh, Europe is already, uh, it's already kind of evening, and here it's really night, right? So that's why most of the information would be here. Uh, so this is a system, it's called Event Registry. And uh, we'll go briefly step by step, right? Step by step, how um, uh, how to build such a system, and uh, what we can, how we can use it. So this is uh, this is the talk about, right? I said in the second half of the talk we will uh, discuss the chatbot. Um, okay, let's go back. Uh, I have a couple of slides, but mostly I'll be showing uh, demos, right? So live demos. Um, um, okay, let's go now to the uh, slides. Uh, so the talk is on uh, global uh, media morning monitoring. So what does this mean, really? Um, so what are the, the key questions we want to uh, answer? So first one is obviously first where to get the data about uh, from, uh, from global media at all, right? So once we get this data, right, so the next question is what can we extract from these uh, documents, right? Uh, of course, documents are in many languages, all languages you can imagine, right, in the world. So now the question is how to join information across the languages. Yeah? And ma many of these languages don't even have uh, machine translation or any kind of language infrastructure, right? So, uh, so how to address this? Yeah? This is a question, uh, important one. Uh, then. <coughs> well, everything in the world is happening through events, right? So now the question is, what is an event at all? Uh, um, and uh, then other questions would be, if an event happens somewhere in the world, you know, you have different views. Not all people agree, right? On Maybe they agree on facts here and there, right? Uh, but uh, certainly they have different bias, different point of view, right? And also once um, having all this information, how to visualize, how to present, because it's a lot of information, it's happening while we talk, right? So how to show this so that uh, actually we would, uh, uh, that we would actually understand what's uh, happening. So these are some of the key questions we want to uh, answer, right? Uh, so there are a couple of demos which uh, I will show. Here are just uh, URLs. Um, uh, so the system is called uh, Event Registry, and uh, why why the name Event Registry? Because it's uh, so we have registries of all kinds in the world: registry of names, registry of customers, of people, of uh, companies, of products, and so on. But there's no registry of events, right? Events, past events, current events, possibly future events, right? Uh, um, where each event would have an ID. In the same way as a product in Amazon would have an ID, right? Uh, so why not an event having an ID which we can refer to? And everything what's related to that event would be there. So articles, videos, photos, people, places, and, and everything related, right? 
so this is the uh, system. So this is just roughly architecture of the system. So on, on left side, uh, there's data coming in. So this would be mainstream news, uh, blocks, and so on. And then we have plenty of these stages uh, um, through which uh, these documents, these texts uh, go through. So it's semantic annotation, extraction of uh, various uh, parts, uh, like dates and so on. Then we have cross-lingual matching, so we need to connect information across languages. Uh, detection of duplicates, there's plenty of duplicate uh, information on, on, on internet. And then forming of events, extraction of events, forming events and uh, connecting events in the storylines. Uh, and eventually we want to have some kind of system, API and uh, visualization. So this is roughly the system which I will uh, present now, right? Uh, maybe just uh, before uh, before going into the system itself, so how to get the data, right? How to get the data. So for this we have uh, more like a middleware, right? So it's called a newsfeed, uh, which I will show. But just to give you an impression, so you live in a huge city, right? Sao Paulo. Uh, um, uh, must be plenty of uh, media just just here, right? Uh, um, same, okay, I, I didn't put really on slides Sao Paulo media, but uh, I have um, two other cities. So, for instance, uh, Athens, right? So, so the first question is where to get the list of newspapers, televisions, or news providers, online news providers. So one possible way is uh, we go to Wikipedia, to this page, list of newspapers, select the continent, you select uh, the country, and then uh, you select the country, and then uh, you select the city often, right? So Athens in Greece, right? And you have just daily political newspapers in Athens, Greece, and you would get that many, right? Okay, it's a small city, five million, right? So nothing for you, but still they have some newspapers, right? Uh, uh, but this is one way how you get how you get a uh, list of newspapers for uh, for that particular place, right? Now, once you have these newspapers, yeah, um, now how to get to the articles, right? So, for instance, if you have name of a newspaper, New York Times in this case, so you get the home page, right? And then somewhere within home page, you have this this type of uh, HTML line, which is basically reference to this RSS feed. Uh, where most of the publishers are using this, although this is kind of disappearing these days slowly, uh, but this is something which uh, one can uh, use and it's at least tries to be standard, right? Uh, uh, although it's complete mess still, but tries to be some kind of standard. And from this you get a list of all current articles on that particular, for that particular newspaper, right? Um, uh, okay. So here I have another list. So these are uh, news publishers from Rio, for instance. So Rio, a little bit smaller city than Sao Paulo, right? But still, uh, you see, just one, a little bit bigger place have uh, has that many uh, uh, media outlets, which uh, they are all reporting something, right? Uh, now altogether, uh, what we have is in the range of hundred fifty thousand publishers across the world, out of which they are, let's say we use more like the more active ones or more high quality one, which is around 40,000, right? 40,000. Uh, and uh, per day, we co so I will show now live how this uh, collection uh, looks like. So this is this newsfeed.ijs.si. So it's... Uh, uh, I will show just uh, the live uh, picture. So here on the left, you see how the content is coming in, right? In all different languages, right? This is happening right now. Um, and uh, then for this content, we can easily identify, uh, since we see from which publisher is coming, right? So we, we put... Uh, uh, these uh, pins on different uh, uh, parts of the world. Th this is just inf informative, really, right? Okay, uh, you see, so this would be, so languages which you get uh, 
pretty much everything, right? Arabic, um, this was Brazilian, uh, and so on. Okay, let, let's pick one uh, random article which just uh, came from the wire, right? Let's say Arabic, right? So the first problem we have, right, is that uh, this article is, um, okay, we get an basically a huge HTML. This is what we get. This is what you see on the screen, right? So this is this HTML which comes from the wire. Now, the first point, uh, the first thing what we need to do is basically to extract the content. This is, looks like kind of easy, right? But it's far from easy. Yeah? So out of this huge HTML, which is often like tens of kilobytes, basically you extract maybe uh, one kilobyte or not even that uh, piece of text, which is clean text, and you want basically to have a title and you want to have a tag, right? In this case, okay, uh, the system extracted this. Okay, let's try another one. Um, um, so it can be pretty much anything. Let's pick one English one. Okay, this is an English one. Kind of extracted well. Okay, what the system does basically uh, cleans, extracts the text, and adds some metadata like date and a couple of other things, right? So now what's the next stage, right? So now we have clean content plus a couple of metadata like you said date and you know the publisher and a couple of other things. Now information can be in all these different languages which uh, we saw before, right? Um, um, uh, or can be even more exotic languages. So often you don't even understand really what's the, uh, what's the language, right? So now the point would be can we put this information into something in some kind of form which is uh, language neutral, where we remove the specifics of the language and where we, where information would be comparable across the languages, right? And as many as possible languages should be covered. Yeah? <laughs> okay, for that purpose we developed another uh, system which is called uh, Wikifier. Um, so let me show you this. So it's called Wikifier. What it does basically, it uh, we drop in piece of text. Let's take this Arabic one, right? So probably nobody can read Arabic here. Luca, not uh, not even you, right? No. Luca was accused. Luca was accused maybe a cu couple of years ago that he's mm, uh, an Arab and he was not let in a nightclub because he was. Uh, so Now I just pasted this text, right? The text which was just extracted from the from the wire, and we say, okay, Wikify it. Otherwise, this is a uh, simple API, right? <sighs> now, what this Wikifier does, right? So takes the this clean piece of text in any of the languages. Basically, we support hundred languages at the moment, but can be a little bit more. Uh, uh, we'll touch this issue, which languages are covered. And um, basically what Wikifier does, it tries to align every piece of this text which has some reference in Wikipedia to that particular Wikipedia concept. For instance, this one, right? This word means Egypt, obviously. So if we go up, go up here, we see uh, that some words are highlighted, right? So and this means, okay, because Wikipedia has cross-lingual links, we translate it, and it means Egypt. So it's a concept Egypt. It's not the string Egypt, it's a concept Egypt, right? So if we go one below, right? So this means Cairo, right? So if we go here, Abu Simple Temples, okay. Last one and so on. Now, since we map every piece of text here into Wikipedia, and Wikipedia is based on 
it's not just piece of tech collection of text documents, but it's it has this so-called wiki data, right? The the semantic knowledge graph behind, right? So we know about this concept a little bit more, right? Uh, so we know, for instance, if we go here over this small w, you see, uh huh. Egypt is a country, is a sovereign state, member of UN, and a couple of other things, right? In the same way, uh, for Cairo, it would say, well, it's a capital, it's a city, right? For Abu Simple temples, it would say, okay, it's a Egyptian temple, no? and place of worship, and and so on, right? Luxor, okay, it's a city, right? And Aswan, we don't know what it is. Uh -huh, it's a city, right? What's CNN? Okay, we know, right? What about journalism, right? Uh, okay, this don't, don't, don't. 2018, it's a year, right? Uh, uh, and so on. Okay, what did we achieve now? We took a piece of text. We didn't even know exactly which language is written in. And in a piece of a second, we have nice conceptual semantic structure from that text, right? Now, in the same way, so you see, um, these are, this is the list of languages we have. So it's kind of a lot of them. Yeah. Maybe you didn't hear for all of them. I, I didn't, to be honest. Um, and um, uh, let me show you how we selected these languages. So these languages are top 100 biggest Wikipedias. Uh, and we and basically the top hundred language uh, top hundred languages based on how big Wikipedia's um, they have. So if you go to Wikipedia, just to give you an impression, so this is complete list of Wikipedia's. Is the table, right? So these are languages which have above one million articles, right? So this means one article is really one one concept, right? So English, okay, this one's a little bit special. Swedish, German, French, Dutch, Russian, Polish, right? Portuguese is also pretty high up, right? And then languages, here you see the, the list of, uh, the number of articles, right? Then uh, languages with more than 100,000 articles, and then with Ukrainian, Persian, Arabic, and, 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 and so on. And we went down to roughly hun language 100, right? So this would be Nepali, Yoruba, Aragonese, well, languages which uh, are there. Uh, um, to be occasionally, we don't even know that they, that they, that they exist, right? Uh, Lombard, for instance, is a small, part of Italy, right? Uh, two million people only. Uh, uh, correct, correct, yeah. Slovenian language, where we are coming from Slovenia, right? So, uh, ha, ha, ha. So although we are also two million people, right? So we have, okay, we are on place 45, right? So this is like a tiny bit of Sao Paulo, right? Uh, um, but we have, let's say, active Wikipedian community and they are kind of maintaining uh, this Wikipedia. Okay, what does this mean, this number really? This is a vocabulary of relevant terms which particular language has, right? Now, if you take the vocabulary of, let's say, mm, Portuguese language, so I it has probably the biggest vocabularies would have maybe a few hundred thousand terms, not, not much entries, not much more, right? Not many more. Um, uh, so this big, uh, Wikipedias, which have, well, millions, right, of these terms, they are really big also in terms of this lexical, uh, as a lexical uh, resource. So that's why, plus, so this is one thing, plus they're constantly updated, right? So every hour we can get updates, and uh, uh, this Wikifier basically gets updated all the time, right? So, so in the way we can say uh, Wikipedia is, uh, well, far the biggest, uh, multi or cross-lingual, right, uh, cross-lingual uh, global vocabulary. So it's updated uh, all the time and uh, we can even get this information. Um, and uh, now this Wikifier, this piece of software, right, 
using this infrastructure to map any kind of text into this kind of conceptual structure. Now, the question is, is this easy or not, this annotation, right? Uh, let me show you an example, uh, random document. Uh, it's a random uh, English document, right? The Syrian conflict. So we'll wikify it. Otherwise, this works pretty fast. So it um, per day it uh, processes a few million documents. Uh, so it's a random document, okay, talks about Syria, war in Syria, and so on. Now if you go through the document, so at some point there's a Mr. Carey, you see, Mr. Carey here. Who is this Mr. Carey? We don't, from the context here, we don't know much more, right? But we would, we would like to label this Mr. Carey the right Mr. Carey, I mean, whoever this guy could be, right? So, uh, so this is now basically the biggest problem this Wikifier is solving, right? Disambiguation. Yeah? Now, if we click now here, carry, right? Uh, so, if we see in the text carry, right? So there would be all these candidates, right? Carry GAA, County Carry, John Carry, uh, many other carries, right? Now the question is, which one is the right one? Uh, so this is the key, the key problem, right? You see how many of them, at least 50 of them. Yeah? Uh, now, this uh, Wikifier, well, is disambiguating this, so it takes the context of the document and takes the context of the concept within Wikipedia, the way how this concept is linked into the rest of Wikipedia. So this, this provides this network context, not, not the textual, but the net network context. Um, and this uh, helps then uh, resolving, and this uh, seems that it's uh, working uh, pretty well. So here on the right side, so now I clicked this uh, John Kerry, you see uh, John Kerry was actually selected, the right one, right? Uh, with fairly high uh, number. And the second one was County Kerry, Kerry GA, Kerry Airport, and uh, many other carries with, uh, with way lower weights, right? So this is an example, right? So in the same way, this works now for any kind of language. Maybe we can try one with uh, Portuguese, right? So uh, what's some popular uh, newspaper here, which I could... Newspaper, newspaper yeah. Can uh, can, can, yeah, please. And we pick one random article, right? <laughs> so whenever I'm giving lectures here in Brazil, whatever news article I select is always uh, fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last time I was here was uh, the lady, right? Uh, Dilma was just selected, yeah. And, and was almost forbidden me to, me, uh, to use her as an example, right? <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I will just uh, drop in this piece of text. Uh, okay. At least not on this on the level of the demo, as far as I know. Okay. Thank you. What's this? 
Cold cut is good. How this works? Um, G1. The, the Wi-Fi disappeared. No, now it's okay. Yeah. Okay, let's take this one. Uh, Okay, 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 okay. You're so protected. <laughs> okay, now I put it in um, Wikifier, right? So it's uh, recognized as a Portuguese language, which is correct, right? And um, uh, so it recognized, for instance, uh, this bank, which is probably the right thing, Brazilian Development Bank is correct, probably. So if we click here, we get to the page, right? Uh, uh, well, now it will repeat, um, and uh, well, many other uh, entities like Petrobras. Okay, it's business. Um, this is a palace, probably. This guy, human, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> president, uh, position, and, and and so on. So, so with basically what I wanted to show. You pick a language, a document in one of these hundred languages, you drop it in, and you get basically uh, a nice list of uh, English um, of uh, English concepts, right? And now um, this means if you take Chinese language or English or Slovenian or Portuguese, pretty much all the that languages will be pretty much aligned, right? Okay. Now having this, we can go further, right? <coughs> uh, um, Mm, just let's, uh, so these are basically, everything is on the slides as well, but uh, I will uh, skip this. Uh, now, uh, let me just skip this and uh, just continue with the demo, right? Okay, so what we did now, we, we were able first to collect, right? To collect uh, the documents, you remember? So documents are coming in, right? Then we we cleaned each document. We put it in the Wikifier, right? Uh, uh, like this. And now we have these documents into this nice, nice representation. Okay. Now we go back to the event registry. Uh, event registry is doing this in the back, right? All the time, right? 
Now, uh, what is now event registry? Event registry is uh, basically uh, collecting now for last four or five years uh, articles from all over the world, right? Per day, like two, three, four hundred thousand. Uh, uh, all the articles are nicely, as we said, cleaned and semantically annotated. And, uh, well, uh, now the next stage is the articles which talk about the same thing, right? So for these articles, we say, well, this probably they form an event, right? An event. And uh, so the way how we see the world through event registry is a sequence of events where every day, okay, we get like maybe three, four hundred thousand articles, but we compress them into something like five to ten thousand events every day. So maybe eight, uh, yeah, between five and ten thousand events per day. Yeah? And of course, each event is also connected, which you will see, to the previous events, related ones, right? So in a way, we see the world as a, an evolving network of interconnected events. So this is how ev what event registry is basically showing, right? Now, let me show you just a couple of things, how, uh, what we can see. I will just go through one example, but in principle, we can do uh, uh, anything, right? Um, let me just uh, put the timeline for uh, everything. So, uh, concept, uh, in principle, we can put uh, anything. But uh, let me show you just one concept which I usually use in, uh, in, in uh, demos, right? Ebola, right? Ebola was a global topic, right? Uh, targeted, I mean, in a way, the whole world, although it had a couple of uh, um, centers, right? So now we do search Ebola virus disease. So we write this e Ebola, right? So how Ebola is said or written in Chinese, who knows, right? So, and we actually don't even care, right? Or how it's uh, Ebola set in whatever one of these many, many languages, we don't care. So the system should take care for this, right? So, so that's why we make a search for the concept Ebola, not for string Ebola. In principle, we can do also string if you want, right? But uh, concept is way stronger, right? Okay, we say search. Okay, and the system says, okay, I have like 300,000, uh, uh, almost 400,000 articles about Ebola, right, in a database. Okay, now we say, okay, many articles, right, but can you compress this into events, right? Because many articles talk about the same thing, so compress this, right? Say, okay, events. And the system will say, okay, I have actually <coughs> these three, four hundred thousand articles can be compressed into 20,000 events. Okay, nice. Uh, and we, we have them here. First event, second event, and, and, and so on. Well, later we will go into events themselves, right? For instance, this event has 600 articles, right? And a certain level of virality. This one, 500 articles, and so on. You see, this is how the system compresses information, right? All these articles are basically about the same event. Okay, but now we can say, okay, we have 20,000 events. What can we, can, can we just analyze a little bit this 20,000 events? What was happening uh, with this Ebola uh, over several years? Okay, first check uh, the key dimensions of this 20,000 events, right? So the first thing is uh, uh, to see the social aspects. So who appears? Now we will try to answer some of the key questions. So who appears in these events? So we'll see, aha, uh -huh, US, West Africa, Liberia, Sierra, Sierra Leone, Guinea, and, and, and so on. So these are the question who, right? Now we can say the question what. What are these events about, right? We saw before who appears, but what are these events about? So it's about infection, virus, disease, health, hospital, and, and so on. You see, this is the, the what question. Okay, then we can go uh, to the question when, right? When these things happened, right? Okay, so now we have timeline from 2014 till pretty much today, right? You see, aha, uh -huh, the outbreak was here. Okay, this is when things were happening. Although Ebola never disappeared completely from uh, news. It's still reappearing actually recently. There was again a uh, small outbreak here, right? Uh, so this is the question when. Huh? So we can always pick one of the uh, uh, dates and just uh, 
check events on that particular day, for instance, so th this is easy, right? So this was question when. Then the question where, where these events actually happened. So the system is also extracting locations of the events, right? So you say event locations, now we'll get the, the world map, right? And now we see, uh-huh, world map and the number, right? So where particular events happen. So mostly it was here in Africa. Okay, let's zoom in. And the closer we get, right, closer we get, uh, more precise we would see where these event events were happening, right? So Sierra Leone, for instance, but here was many of them, right? Uh, then next question is who is writing about these events? So now we, we saw who is appearing, what is in the events, when they happened, where they happened. Now, who is writing about the events, right? Because we are crawling all these publishers, right? So, uh, new sources. So, we'll see now new sources which are covering Ebola the most, right? So, this is allafrica.com. Probably you wouldn't know. I didn't know about this before either, right? Daily Mail, Reuters, Relief Web, and, and so on, right? So there's a list of uh, um, list of uh, publishers which are covering this particular topic the most. And we can also click here and we see where these publishers are actually coming from, right? These are the biggest one. Hmm? Then, uh, okay, this is not functioning yet, so we are trying to extract also the journalists. So who who is actually writing, but I, I will skip this. Since we extract all these concepts from, uh, we can also, also check how things are connected, right? Uh, uh, let me just uh, change these parameters. And you say, okay, uh, show me just, uh, let's say, organizations, right? Organizations which are connected to uh, Um, no, it's not working, it's not just organizations. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So we, we have this graph, right, how things are connected. And on each line, somehow, this is what we are trying to do now, it's also, uh, should be also attached relations. So how this th these two things are actually connected to each other, right? Um, okay, it's just a graph, kind of, kind of nice picture, but uh, not always uh, very useful. Um, uh, then we can, well, we saw the trend before, right? So we saw timeline, so the question when, uh, and we saw, huh, there was a, this peak in um, 2014, right? But now we would like um, to see the structure of this trend, right? Uh, uh, let me just, uh, mm. Something is not working. Let's see, it should. Anyway, here we would see the structure of the trend. I, I will just skip this. Uh, it's kind of nice visualization, but. Uh, let me just try once more. Uh -huh. <laughs> you see the structure of the trend now, yeah. Uh, and you can uh, play with this structure as well. You can add uh, different things and so on. So there's uh, plenty of these things, right, uh, up here. Then we'll skip this one. We can also, so events are not uh, always just, uh, well, atomic events, right? So they, they can be hierarchical events, like Olympic Games, right? Uh, World Cup is a big event, right? But uh, it has lots of sub-events, right? So now for certain type of uh, queries, we would want to see this hierarchy as well, right? So here we have, well, all these events on the top and then we can, well, drill down into whatever uh, um, direction we want, right? So this is kind of occasionally useful, not always, right? And then the last one, when we are analyzing these massive events, this one is kind of uh, useful, right? So now we have these 20,000 events about Ebola, right? Uh, Okay, 20,000. Uh, what are they talking about, actually? Before we 
we saw all these different slices uh, across these 20,000 events. But now we would like to see what uh, these events are talking about. Okay. Now what we do, we take all these 20,000 events and we categorize them into taxonomy, three-level taxonomy. And uh, so the biggest chunk is about health, obviously. I mean, it's Ebola, what else? It must be health, right? And if we drill down, okay, it's condition diseases and infectious diseases, okay. So it kind of makes sense, right? Now, on the other side, not all the Ebola-related events are about health, right? So what else it could be? For instance, it can be business as well, right? Business investing and, well, stocks and bonds, right? So events which are classified as trading events, right, which mention Ebola, right? So and uh, we just click here and we get this, uh, these events, right? So, uh, and these events mention, at least mention somewhere Ebola as well. Uh, so this is an example, right? Now, uh, what else uh, can, we, can we do, right? So um, we can uh, just these few more demos and then we switch to, the, to this uh, chatbot, right? Um, let's go now to the live picture. Uh, so we go back to the event registry and we see the live picture now, right? So for instance, this is uh, an event which is just happening just now. Donald Trump unchecked hold power has come to end. Okay, great. Um, and for this one, we collected 6,000 articles already. So this was pretty much this. Uh, <coughs> um, what? Uh, well, but we can pick. Uh, we, we can pick, for instance, this one. Yeah. This is an event which is happening right now. Or Mi Miami voters give Beckham approval. To, okay. Not the most important event in the world, right? But uh, still, okay. Uh, now this is one single event, right? So it's happened on this day, the location is here, we classified it into soccer, and this is like the center article, so it's kind of a quick summary. And again, we can see, well, who appears? Beckham and a couple of other guys, right? Tech Cloud, okay, it's easy, we just uh, show the words, right? Okay, wait, come. Okay, nothing spectacular. Now reporting timeline. We see, huh, these were first reports and then basically the event is still happening, right? The bigger the circle, more social media response. For each article which we get from the wire, we measure how many tweets, retweets, shares, likes, and whatever it's possible to retrieve, right? Uh, um, uh, we get, right? So this is the way how event uh, is happening, right? Who is writing uh, about it? Again, we have this uh, full coverage. And s now, a similar source, we can put event is never alone, right? Uh, event usually has some preceding events and usually has also some follow-up events. And uh, so now we will put this event into perspective or into uh, in a context, right? And... Um, So event timeline, now we see, well, uh, we can zoom in a little bit, and we see the full timeline of this Beckham and uh, whatever uh, he was uh, doing, right? So the full timeline of uh, uh, Beckham, and we can, we can tune this metric. Yeah? So this is how we put uh, an event in a perspective. Like if we would um, select uh, maybe another, let's say big event, right? So let's say uh, it's a business event on Samsung, if I see. Uh, so for instance, this is also happening right now. For here you would see a little bit more articles. So this is a regular business event, right? So uh, it started here. Started here, and then was, and it's still happening. H here was the peak, really. Uh, and you see the well, this <coughs> whatever publication we can check, right? So this was, yeah, the A Asian Age uh, newspaper was reporting and was extremely well shared on uh, on internet. And 
the Asian age, another article, right? And you see it's still going up, right? So this is a business event, and all these articles, each dot here is one article on the same thing, right? Um, this is the English language, and these other are other languages, right? Just before we switch now, uh, just one last thing. I mean, I was showing now about events, about the future and current events, right? I mean, there's no good reason why uh, we wouldn't uh, also put the dates uh, ahead of time, right? Uh, so we say, so starting date is, um, so uh, we put here the date like uh, 18, right? And we put here the date 19, right? I think it should work. And uh, we say search. No, not sure if this is really the right thing. So basically we see events which are... Uh, uh, aha, it is, yeah, actually, it, I think it works. Uh, so uh, I put also the current events, but basically we see we see events which are also announced or we will happen in the future, like elections, product releases, uh, and so on. So if I would correct these dates, today we are seventh, right? Let's put from. from uh, Saturday, I think, for, for the next year, right? Yeah, so we s the system sees like 181 future events already, right? So something which will happen in EU on Brexit on 21st um, December, probably it's correct, right? Uh, and, and so on. So this is also a little bit of sneaking in the future. Now what we do now, as a kind of research topic still, but kind of results are kind of promising. Predicting events which are not uh, uh, announced, right? So we see an event happening. For instance, we saw before this Samsung event, or can be something else, right? So the question is, can we predict what are likely events that will follow up in the next, let's say, days or weeks? Yeah? So this is one, one topic which we are working on. Uh, it's kind of some form of causality, right? Uh, yeah, so I think this th this would be kind of quick quick demo of this system. Uh, so if there are any questions, quick, otherwise we'll just switch quickly to this other presentation. Uh, is there any quick question? Alguém gostaria de fazer alguma pergunta rápida sobre o que ele acabou de colocar? Se não, a gente segue para o chat box, né? É isso? Ah. How it's being used? So it's being used, we have like maybe 40, 50 customers at the moment, including, I don't know, IBM Watson is buying data from us, Bloomberg is using this, hedge funds, at least half of them are hedge funds, uh, uh, these open intelligence organizations, threat for a couple of other threats. So it's typically input for many of them. We don't know how they use it because they get just stream of data, right? I mean, so that we, we cannot know uh, for others. Yeah, it's just, uh, so the system basically provides a structured, nice structured picture of the world, right? Which, uh, let's see if you have, uh, I don't know, uh, any of these Reuters or Bloomberg uh, terminal, right? You get l maybe a little more articles than we do, ha uh, we have, right? But they, they're not structured in the same way. They're not cross-lingual, right? So, um, so this is this is uh, maybe one one difference, right? I just wanted to say, so the system, everything what I was clicking before, basically is just the API calls, right? So, you can go to this uh, uh, GitHub, and you have nice Python in interface, or it's REST in interface, so it can be Python on or anything else, right? Uh, so. In this kind of few lines of Python code, you get uh, already results, and the results are always in uh, nice JSON, so it's kind of easy to use, right? Um, yeah, that's it. 
Any other quick question? Otherwise, uh, let's switch to, to, to this other presentation. So just now we had a uh, discussion about chatbots, right? Uh, and Badesco Bank has also this uh, uh, chatbot, if I understood right. And uh, as part of discussion, we mentioned that we did uh, also particular Luca Bradesco, right? Uh, coincidence, uh, the, the name is the same, so we said this today <laughs> already many times. Ele chama Lucas Bradesco, é verdade. Esse é o sobrenome yeah. dele. Uh, yeah, we took best from both worlds, right? The name, the first name and the second name. Right? <laughs> kind of like a yeah, this was planned already 40 years ago, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen today. Yeah. Uh, you predicted this. <laughs> I couldn't, I didn't know a half a year ago. Uh, so this is basically Lucas... Uh, Lucas uh, PhD, right, from a couple of years ago, or not even that long, maybe two years ago, right? Uh, uh, and uh, maybe if I just give first slide and then the rest you can you can uh, do, right? So uh, you have many chatbots in the world, including Alexa and Cortana and uh, Google Home and all these other uh, uh, male or female names, right, uh, which try to be smart, right? But none of these chatbots is actually smart. This one tries to be smart. Uh, and uh, why? So it actually understands the conversations. Why it understands? Because uh, uh, we are using, we are mapping every piece of text into something which we call common sense knowledge. Luca will tell more about this common sense knowledge. Um, this is a knowledge base called Psych, which we will touch. And it's accumulating knowledge, right, through discussions. It's not a chatbot which would, uh, which would just, well, uh, <coughs> get a piece of sentence, right, uh, or a piece of text, search for the right pattern, and respond in some kind of way, uh, but actually accumulates the knowledge because it understands it, right? And this accumulated knowledge is then reused also in a uh, collaborative uh, way, right? Um, now, Luca, maybe best if you just go quickly through the whole thing, right? Uh, 